Hey Rap Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to uh, basically my favourite things of the update 1.1, the holiday treat update. I've gone through a few stuff. You've seen some like the big headline stuff like increased inventory and maybe being able to catch and kill creatures and cook them instantly with a spicy weapon or make them into dried meats using a salty weapon. But what else is there? What are some of my other favourite things? So yeah, I'm going to do this almost like a Let's Play style because there was just so much I want to go through. I don't want to have to spend ages editing it, so you're going to get the benefit of what I really think as we play. Let's go. So first off, sleeping. Even if it's the middle of the night, you're going to wake up at 6 o'clock from now on. No longer waking up halfway through the day. You can still sleep earlier than this. And it can wake you up still at night time. But in theory, it should wake you up at 6 o'clock now. So you've got more time of the day to spend gathering resources rather than it being mostly at night. A few other changes. It does look like they've patched the glitch where you could trap your pets. A lot of you guys were telling me you used to do that and be able to access their inventory anywhere. Well, that has now been fixed, I do believe. It's only when it's actually in range from now on that you'll be able to actually access the pet's inventory, which is okay. That was a kind of cheat glitch. Another sad one a lot of you guys might be unhappy with. If you've been using either the fresh storage to get your sap catchers on, well, that has now been fixed. Did warn you guys about this recently, but yeah, that's been changed too. Incidentally, a new thing that some of you guys were reporting to me was that your Christmas treats are actually dropping charms, not just actual treats or candy. So you've got a small chance, just like you can whenever you're harvesting some of these charms, you might indeed get a charm. Some that don't know what the charms are, we'll see they're the accessories and you can get different versions like fresh, sour, spicy, and salty that will give you extra damage or put that kind of element damage on any weapon. Now, another thing that will only last a little while, but some of you guys are also reporting that even if you've got your trees only half built, they're dropping some of the candy. So if you haven't got loads of resources to make loads of these, it's still worth going and buying it and placing some down and just see. I'm sure this will get patched, but you never know. They might just leave it. Originally, I thought or assumed the infected wolf spider would still pop up in your stuff collection once you unblock the haze or block the haze. But no, it is, seems it's one of the few creatures that haven't actually been added as a stuffed creature. Who knows why? Maybe they just forgot about it. Yep, there is no infected stuffed spider. Couple changes to do with the pond. If you die and you're well somewhere deep, really, your bag will now spawn on the surface. So we're going to test this out right now. I'm going to purposely go and die inside somewhere deep and hopefully we can see if this works. Also they've increased the difficulty slightly of the robots in the pond. As you progress deeper into it they'll get harder. I'm guessing they're making it more of a challenge but that was in the patch notes something I missed. They've also made nighttime a little bit easier to see stuff around as well apparently. Specifically lighting changes. So we're going to run out of oxygen now. Let's see if a bag does indeed spawn nearby. Of course, I would go and spawn somewhere ages away that I forgot I'd actually set up. But this is good because I can show you another big crucial change. That if you're looking for the fridge cooler, something a lot of you guys, and me too included, said was locked too far into the game. Well, they've kind of moved it a little bit earlier. You should now find the recipe for the fridge instead of having to complete the undershed laboratory it will now be actually inside the undershed laboratory i'm guessing it's going to be like here somewhere obviously i've already got it and this is my single player world and i didn't want to have to load up another just to try and show you guys but yeah it does look like they have moved it so you should find it in here and now you'll be able to craft your own fridge instead of only getting it once you've actually gone through all of the undershed. So that is still a big change. You could theoretically, once you finish the laboratories, you get much earlier access. You can make a bunch of meals and have them last a lot longer for your whole adventures in the upper yard. So really, my bag should be somewhere in the top of the water here. Okay, so what it's done, it hasn't actually made it just rise where you died directly upwards. It's put my bag somewhere where you can easily get it instead of having to go all the way down into the deep water. Still kind of annoying though, I ain't gonna lie. Dying at one end of the pond compared to another, that's a bit of a big mission. But I guess it's trying to show you that this is the way that you're meant to do the underwater pond laboratories, by going through the T-Rex mouth first. And there's the bag. Of course, you're not meant to drop all of your equipment anymore, unless you've got it enabled. 
custom game modes, you can actually change this. The default, of course, is now you only drop resources, no matter what game mode it is. Oh, baby. Yeah, I've got my zipper. I won't bother too much with the zipper stuff, but just to say that it does go a little bit slower going up than it was in testing. So another reason why if you have built maybe loads of towers, you might still prefer to keep them, as it still might be quicker and easier for you. But otherwise, it's slow and steady, and it will get you to A and B. Also, you can see, now that I've died, it's asking me to go ahead and analyse lily pad wax. That's because if you die while swimming, or you're drowning, it's going to teach you basically how to craft diving gear. It's a brand new story or quest line for the survival. Just to give you some top tips. Looks like there's been some fixes to the points of interest as well. Some of them weren't unlocking properly, namely the dome. So by now, if you go close enough to it, it should technically unlock. If not, you still might have to actually get inside it for it to work properly. They've also changed some of this laboratory. They've basically made it a bit easier to see in and around as some stuff was kind of blocking the line of sight. And these water coolers are pretty much in every single laboratory. And there you go. Pond Dome should open up now when you're actually inside. Also, another addition to these survival missions is it will guide you through how to upgrade weapons. I did show this off in stream as well, but dandelion tufts no longer can be cheese to just stop you breaking your legs. You've got to pull them out correctly with more time so you don't actually take any damage when you fall. If you do it to last minute, you're still going to take damage now. They've also increased the damage cutman effect on the mantis armor. It used to be 20%, but now it's 30%. They've also increased how long it works or lasts. Instead of 15 seconds, it's now 20 seconds. One thing that maybe not a lot of people will know is, hopefully until later, or if you've got a big world is, it does look like I've got optimization improvements a lot. If you've got lots of drop backpacks or buildings, it should hopefully stop with some disconnects. Although it has to be said, when I tested this out the other day, I was playing this as Sim and a bunch of other YouTubers on the world crate by some of these subs, we got disconnected quite frequently. So maybe still a bit of work there to help multiplayer. Are you wondering what the brand new places are in the upper yard? They're simply just the super mixers being added and wormholes as well. Basically the sweet locations. So if you see anything when you previously had all of them, you'll need to go back and check some of them out. So there were some big buffs to magic once again in terms of how much stamina usage you do when you're firing and it's incredible. It's like having a gun just firing stun. Obviously it doesn't do that much damage to them but I'm literally keeping it away so it's absolutely OP now. Try this on a bunch of creatures, see how you get. You should see massive improvements with the magic stuff now. I'm not even wearing the wizarding gear properly and I'm still doing a huge amount of damage and just keeping them away so great stuff. Spike strips are no longer going to damage you if you step on them. So hopefully this means you'll be encouraged more to use them if you're worried about taking damage from them in the past. One of the best features is being able to change your nameplate showing. If you click on map, you should be able to go ahead and do it. Looks like there's still a bit of an issue with marking yourself as hidden, using a controller on PC anyway. So maybe it's okay on Xbox, and obviously you can just use a, a mouse but I could not get this to work sometimes, or sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. But it's still a great addition, having your name hidden. You can now play proper hide and seek or hunger games without having to be able to search or find other players. Trail makers, they can now be having name tags on them. You can now just click on trail marker and type in whatever you want to call it. It should now pop up with the name when you're further away. It is so good being able to dismantle stuff now and know that you're going to get everything back that you put inside it. No longer having to carry stuff for miles, dismantle it, take what you need, and go ahead and put it wherever else you want it. If you like a colour, and this is one of the best features as well, you don't have to mess around anymore in all the options to change it if you want to just repeat it somewhere. If for some reason the copy and paste isn't showing, make sure you've actually got it enabled. On PC for some reason it isn't default. Make sure you've assigned it just in case that has happened. Press LB and customize. I can go ahead and paste the correct settings quickly from the other light if I've already got lights up. Or I can go ahead and copy it and place it where I want. And there you go. You can just copy exactly the right light settings on everything that you want. 
you get some really nice cool colors. And absolutely some of the best brand new features is the ability to build without having to have everything in your hands. This is such a game changer. There's the grass, because the stem is right next to me. You can go ahead and just fill it straight away like that. People were worried about the jerky racks not being useful anymore, since you can go ahead, like I said, and kill bugs with your spicy weapon or salty weapon and get ready to eat food. But really, I think they're more in use to cure your pupa and your liver from berries. That's their main use, really. So that's still going to be something that they're, they're mostly there for. Plus, you don't get access to them spicy weapons or salty weapons until much later in the game. One thing I would really love if the devs were to consider it is we get a buff for having obviously a monster on our wall but why can't we have a buff for the stuff creatures too? I actually want them to add an increased chance to get gold cards. It's definitely, definitely something that a lot of players are kind of grumpy about that getting all the gold cards is really, really time consuming and some people have killed absolute hundreds upon hundreds this playthrough is about 171 days and some of my gold cards did reset but yeah i haven't got i've got a few but not a lot maybe if we make a stuff creature somewhere we could get like a 50 percent increase no so that's pretty much all my favorite changes some little bits and bobs you need to know about the 1.1 update let me know what you're enjoying the most and i'll see you guys for more grounded content soon Bye bye